This is the St. Leon Wind Farm, an absolutely magical place in Manitoba to visit. Located 150 kilometers southwest of Winnipeg, just south of Notre Dame de Lourdes, I highly recommend getting there via Highway 3 and then going through Carmen and taking the 245 to the 244. But as soon as you come over the rise after Rose Isle or start to see them on the horizon, it's an amazing introduction to these electric prairie windmills. Just a reminder before I go on that if you end up liking the video, please be sure to hit that like button, but also don't forget to subscribe. That's even more important, but they both help a lot. The St. Leon Wind Farm was Manitoba's first wind farm. There's one other wind farm in Manitoba, which is the St. Joseph Wind Farm, located about 100 kilometers southeast. It's also beautiful, but I don't find it has the same dynamic of elevation. The St. Leon Wind Farm has 63 turbines, which are each 80 meters high, but at their highest, with the blade, they're about 120 meters high. For height comparison, 201 Portage at Portage and Main in Winnipeg is 120 meters high, so these wind turbines are very close in height to one of the tallest buildings in Winnipeg. So I read that the blades are made of balsa wood and carbon fiber, which is interesting. I also read that the whole wind farm produces 120 megawatts of power, but I don't know exactly what that means or how to put it into context. So if you know more about this, please mention it down in the comments. I wonder how many houses that can power a year, things like that. I'll tell you one thing though, charging all my drone batteries and my camera batteries and all my other batteries, I'd probably only power my house for about a minute. The whole turbine farm is separated over 93 kilometers of really beautiful farmland. It's low rolling land thanks to it being just beside the Pemina Valley, which provides enough elevation to be interesting but also allows you to see almost the whole farm from one vantage point. In many of the shots you're seeing here, you can count over 50 turbines, and there's one shot I think I actually counted all 63. The first time I was out there was actually the same summer it was completed in 2006. This was actually back before I had kids and when I was still running the Winnipeg photo community, so I'd take 20 or 30 people out there at least once a year, and we'd all hang out and photograph uh, in big groups. I myself would go out there at least two or three times a year because it's a spectacular place for Starscape and Star Trail photos, as you can see here. What really struck me hard when I first visited them, and honestly still gets me every time I go out there, is their incredible size and just their presence. When you stand under one, it's really both almost daunting but definitely exhilarating. The other thing which is incredible is the sound they make. Unfortunately, when I was out there, I didn't bring any good audio uh, recording equipment, but listen to this that I just got from my phone. In 2021, I was out there and happened to see a couple of technicians who were in from Quebec working on one of the turbines. It was amazing. After I yelled up to them for permission to film them while they were working, I got right to work putting a drone in the air because it's something I've only ever seen that once. Sometimes when I get out there, I find it interesting because they'll be turning and sometimes they're not. And that's because they have operating specs where they only turn when the wind is above 12 kilometers an hour. And they also don't operate when the temperature outside is below minus 33 Celsius. I've also actually heard them spin down when it's too windy. While researching wind turbines, I discovered that farmers get around four to $8,000 per turbine on their land, which is based on the megawatt output. They're compensated for the land usage and also for the access roads and space the turbines themselves take up. Just a heads up for anybody thinking of going out there that most of these roads are on private property, but the highways and side roads are a really good vantage point. Also, don't park just off the highway. Drive around a little bit to find a nice side road where cars aren't whizzing by you at 100 kilometers an hour. Now look, I really like statistics, so one final bit of information I want to mention is about wind turbines and birds. I actually remember when wind turbines were just coming out. No, not the original ones in the 1800s, but moreover the uh, ones uh, that first came into Canada in the 90s. 
Back then, there was a lot of concern about the amount of bird deaths caused by the turbines. What I've seen whenever I'm out there photographing is that when there's tons of birds coming back to chill overnight, they always take a wide path around these turbines. It's not like they're small or invisible. In researching this, I found statistics showing that the number two killer of birds is tall glass buildings. The number three is actually pesticides, and then four is cars, and five is cell phone towers. And then a distant sixth or seventh is actually the wind turbines. And the number one killer of birds, you guessed it, cats. <laughs> cats are credited for about 70% of bird deaths annually, while turbines are under 1%. I think it's even under half of 1%. But remember, 29% of people know that you can just make up statistics. Just a reminder to hit that like button on this video and please subscribe. I'm putting out a lot more content now. I've got a whole bunch of videos in the can that I'm going to get out soon and I'm trying to build my viewer base. Finally, huge thanks to Les for always keeping me up to date with when the area is looking its best to visit. I really appreciate it if you made it right up to the end here. Huge thanks for watching the whole thing. Keep your eyes on my socials for more videos coming soon. My socials are uh, in the description down below.